This roll with an aggressive blue belt got pretty intense. Today I'll be trying to break down the scrambles so you can see what's going on and learn how to implement these fast and dynamic techniques into your arsenal. Luke kicks things off with an aggressive guard pass attempt, causing me to frantically frame and push him away as Snack can see the pass in literally the first 10 seconds of the round. If he'd solidified that, I might as well have retired my blue belt and get set back to white. One thing you'll notice in this round is how persistent Luke is with head tension. Grabbing the head makes it difficult to create space, forcing me to scramble out of position. As the bottom player, it's essential that I find a way to off-balance Luke. If he's able to maintain his balance, his attacking options are wide. Always keeping him hopping limits his mobility to throw in attacks, and opens up attacks for myself. Okay, so this next technique is actually something that I picked up from Luke, but instead of pulling the leg drag across his hip like a standard leg drag, he pushes it across my hip line, dealing with both of my legs at the same time by preventing me from regarding with my outside leg. A super cool detail that I think everyone can use. However, I think the best move here should have been to keep the knee pointed at my hips, and because he went hip down before getting control of my hips, I was able to counterattack with an armbar, which brings us to our next checkpoint, constant submission threats. You'll notice throughout the video, I'm constantly trying to threaten Luke with submissions to put him back on defense. A great time to use the good old offense is the best defense quote. If not submissions, then I'm also trying to throw sweeps and off balances to disrupt his attacking cycle. However, at this point, I'm getting pretty exhausted of being on bottom, and I stand up to wrestle. But I soon find out that that was a huge mistake. As I go in for an arm drag single leg, Luke catches me in a front headlock and hits a heavy sprawl to force me to the mat. He wastes no time attacking my back and sinking in a deep rear naked choke to get the first submission of the round. Luke doesn't stop there. Seconds later, during the wrestling exchange, he catches me in a front headlock and swivels around to attack an armbar. However, I use a very important technique called the hitchhiker to avoid the submission. The idea is to keep your thumb pointed down, raise your shoulder, and sort of back roll as they lean back on the arm. If you time it right, you'll free yourself, and in my case, I'll transition to an aggressive takedown to flip the position. Now this was filmed during the time all I knew how to do was spam knee cuts, and unfortunately attacking a singular route doesn't work too well against good opponents. Think of guard passing as chopping down a tree. Consistent hits at angles will advance you more than a heavy swing in the same spot. Learning how to chain the leg drag Toriando and knee cut together seamlessly would have done me a lot more work than fainting the two and jumping onto a knee cut in the end. Luke manages to stand back up. However, I keep the pace high as I guard pull into a double leg, creating harmony between the wrestlers and guard pullers. As we reset back, we start hand fighting again. However, after half a minute or so of back and forth, I decide to pull hoping to entangle the legs. Luke does a good job fending off my hooks and keeping his base, and using that head tension to prevent me from pushing him away and off balancing him. Now going back to an earlier point, as Luke presses in, you see my left leg shoot up for a fairly shitty triangle, however still creating enough of a threat to get him to back off. Unfortunately soon after, I shoot an armbar a little too close to the sun and end up missing and falling to bottom half guard. A good thing to keep in mind would be to slow down in dominance and speed up in vulnerable positions. Right now Luke is in a dominant position of half guard, so there's no reason for him to explode and risk exposing space for me to escape from. I on the other hand need to start forcing posts, rocking back and forth, and making it hard for Luke to rest and settle down. Fatigue definitely comes into play here, but if I don't start moving fast, it's going to get a lot worse. I give a hard bump and use my elbow to expose hip space, then I replace my elbow with my knee to secure a recovery. From this point on, I'm basically just offending with no serious submission attacks other than low percentage feints. Here as Luke starts to cut an angle, I go for a leg lock entanglement, but he very easily is able to capitalize and sets his leg back to avoid it. I try attacking that armbar, but he postures up because I have no control over his posture. The one good thing that I am doing is I'm constantly re-engaging my legs either on his shoulders or his hips, and this will keep him off of me, but I still can't make advancements towards submissions. Because I'm basically only defending at this point, Luke is able to start rummaging through my guard and start pouring on some real pressure. On a similar note, Luke has pretty much skated by all of my attacking arsenal, so his confidence has skyrocketed and the thought of danger really isn't affecting his game, allowing him to take a lot more risks. The last thing I wanted to say, although I might have mentioned it earlier, 
From a full defensive standpoint, simply pummeling your legs onto your opponent's shoulders or hips allow you to be lazy like me and prevent a lot of oncoming load from your opponent, rather than just using your arms to frame. And with that, we've reached the end of a very tough fight. Shout out to Luke for being a f***ing dog, and I hope you guys were able to learn a few useful tips or techniques to help you in the scramble.